PSIA put it out on the website. The national team put it out on their website. That three, if you saw, it's three different skate programs. One of them is ours, the only one. Um, the cool part about it is, even though it's not PSIA, we're going to use PSIA instructors. And next year, you'll be able to get credit for it. There'll be a, an instruction manual coming out, matrix, videos, all that kind of stuff is being done right now. And then they've endorsed skating as an app, as a leeway to ski. If you look at the Rollerblade website, you'll see Michaela on there. So Michaela is skating on our, our skates, even though our coach doesn't like it. But they had her skating <coughs> on like a indoor thing that they can't disclose. And you can see her standing on a pair of rollerblades. So there's a lot of similarities on skating and the relationship to skiing. We're going to do gates. We're going to do lane changes. All the fundamentals you'll do in a level two type skating, we're going to do on rollerblades in the parking lot September 29th. 40% off skates, can't beat that deal. Whether you're PSA or not, I don't care. We'll still give you 40% off. And if you're not on that PSA, day or you can still come to the event. What's beforehand that? Beforehand or on that day? Beforehand, if you'd like. Yes, yeah, just so contact So what if you're not me. a very good skater? I mean, what does, you know, as far as your ability level goes? Just, just like mm -hmm. here. We take you in a, a beginner area and we start you off on grass, mm -hmm. just like we do our beginners. Mm -hmm. We'll start you off mm -hmm. going left and right Saturday. and control your speed and return you. Just apply it. We haven't I'm priced it out yet. Yeah. Last year we did 20 bucks, mm -hmm. and that gives you rental of skates, mm -hmm. elbow pads, yeah, not just and knee pads, we get out and bring your own helmet. And then if you bring your own helmet out, wear a bike helmet. Bring, no, just bring a bike helmet and supplier to us. Right. And if you like your skates, you can buy them on the spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you want to buy them beforehand, we can sell them to you. Yeah, they're really cool. It's changed. A lot of ski boots. Does anybody use poles when they skate? Yes. <laughs> we do have an advanced group that did bring poles. We send out information, put rubber tips on the bottom of them, and you can use poles if you want to break through gates. Yes. Yep. I think some of us could begin with mine and she has put over. We can. Oh, <laughs> sure. We'll ask you to bring your pulse if you want to use them that spot. Huh. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't have to use that. Yeah, I want to pillow on my ass. That's what yes. I want. So if you need anything, you can hit me Instagram, uh, schemebob at hotmail.com. Please. Gee, thanks a lot, Bob. We're going to move along now. Paul's going to talk about the agenda for tonight. Yeah. So, um, so just looking around the room real quick, we have our uh, we've been cracking jokes about. Oh my goodness, look at all these um, these new these newbies coming in. Um, so I think I think as I look around the room, I believe almost all of us here have over five years of uh, teaching experience. Um, some of us have, well, I'd say the majority of us have over 20, 20 years of teaching experience, and there's a few of us that probably have over 30 years of teaching experience now. Um, but uh, back here at this table, though, Janine, you, you have how many do you have now? One year? Okay. All right, if you have under five years of teaching experience, raise your hand. Under five years. Okay, right here. Whoa! So, do you want to introduce yourself so everybody in here? Uh, my name is Andrew Dance. I just started here uh, last season. One year. I know my value here. Never talked to He's a traveling engineer, so enjoy his presence while he yeah. has it. And I, and I can say with uh, confidence that Andrew is the uh, the best bump skier on our ski school staff. So if you want to see some good bump skiing, <laughs> right. go grab Andrew and do a couple runs because he'll show you how it's done. Um, so uh, so so you know th this session, you know, we have this balancing of act of like you know who who should this con who should this be geared towards? And um, we love that we have uh, the folks that come out every year, year after year, and support us here. We're really trying to draw in people like Andrew um, and, and Janine and some other of our new instructors that aren't here. Um, so we, we thank you for coming out and representing the, the new folks. Um, so as we go through this, we have, we have several audiences here. We have audiences that are looking to sharpen the saw. Uh, yeah, if you borrow from Stephen W here. Uh, you, we have uh, folks that are going towards level two certification teaching exam. Uh, and that this session will be geared towards them as well. 
A uh, show of hands here. We got Scott. Anybody else? Oh, Rick. That's right. Rick, Rick, and okay, Tracy. Okay, and you're done with level. You're, you're level three. You're going for level three. Yeah, so. I might be a terminal level. Terminal level three. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so we're gonna try to gear this uh, this this uh, towards each of these audiences here. What that means is if if you feel like you're a little overwhelmed by this. Uh, know that it's that it's geared towards the, the some folks that are doing level two, but um, but there are some things that you can draw out from it. Um, I kind of organize up here on, on the whiteboard here. Uh, I kind of uh, this is just something I came up with. If you're going through the level two process, you got to have these things down. You have to have your teaching model down. These are the components of the American teaching system that you really have to own and bring it uh, to the level two process. Uh, you have to have your learning styles, your BAK down, your skills concept, and also your, exer your exercise, exercise line or um, progression. Um, if you really want to bring your A game, then we can start to incorporate DIRT and the five fundamentals and the phases of the turn into, into that segment that you're going to be doing the creative teaching module. Um, and of course, with all this, you want to bring in your, your learning styles as well, uh, when possible and when, when appropriate. Um, and that's related to, to, of course, you know this bullet here under the, uh, the fundamental tools, uh, just being redundant there. But uh, the, main, the main thing is, if, for, for, if this becomes overwhelming, if you can just grab one of these or two of these and use these uh, as you move through one of these these activities, that's great. You don't feel like you have to incorporate all of them. Um, it, it would be better for you to deliver uh, a segment that is clean and clear using the skills concept and maybe the teaching model and skip perhaps getting really into the exercise line perhaps. Um, but you know, it'd be great if you could use this, but it's not critical, but the main thing is making sure that you're applying maybe the teaching model and the skill, skills concept if it starts to get overwhelming, try not to incorporate everything. If you can do all of these together, that's really where the masterful, skillful, you know, expert teacher comes into play here. Um, so I just want to talk about pulling cards real quick for those that are going into the exam process. If you're not going into the exam process, think of it as your first chair ride um, with the students and your first run with the students. So when you're when you're standing in lineup. <clears throat> waiting to, to get the signal from Tim to take your group out and you're pushing your way to the lift line and standing in the lift line and on the chair, your first run up, that, that conversation time is, is great to start to build rapport and trust with the student, but also just to start to establish maybe what are some goals. Um, what are some goals? And, and so that you have that context when you see their first run to see where they are at in, in attaining some of those goals and what, what you need to build or what you have to work from. Um, with pulling the cards in the first ride and the first chair ride, one of the mistakes that happens when you get your creative teaching game on is a lot of people start to look at the skier profile and start to really hone in on things like their other areas of their other hobbies, their other interests, their occupation. Um, they start to lead with that. And what I mean, like what I mean by leading with that is they, you know, if you are in the exam process and you pull a card that says they're a school bus driver, um, you all of a sudden you see these instructors that will start to go, oh, well, I know what I can do with this guy. We could talk about, you know, when you when you make a turn, you don't you don't turn your shoulders and your whole body when you're turning the steer bus. You, you're steering the bus. You just you just turn the steering wheel and you keep your your upper body really quiet. And that's what we want to do in skiing. And, and I could talk about the wheels in the bus and how the wheels turn and go round and, 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 and yeah and, and, and right and round and round and round. And I can oh my goodness and I can talk about going around the bend and you know how you know the pressure when you go around the bend pressure is building on the outside tire just like in skiing you know the outside ski that's where pressure starts to build more so when we're going around the turn. And they and they start doing all this and and it's it's the classic you know shoving ten pounds of crap into the five pound bag that ends up happening in these lessons where they start to just connect to the, the, the student's interest, hobbies, occupation, and start to be, pull out all these analogies uh, as it relates to skiing. Um, what, what I really propose doing is if you're, in, if you're in an exam situation, 
time is valuable. You have one you have one lift ride to figure this out. And so what I what I always recommend is if you see there, okay, it's a school bus driver. Put that out of your mind for you know to to start this process out. Put that to the back of back of your mind. Really focus on on things like. Um, which is she could, she could look graceful or, you know, is having problems with speed control. Those are the things you want to focus on. And then when you pull your, your skill profile card, where then it talks about, well, they're an open, they're an open track parallel skier who primarily controls speed by skidding. Um, that's where you want to build your lesson plan from to identify where are they at right now, where do you want them to be based on those two pieces of information, and when you start to think about movements and how you want the movements to change, change in a way that has a, a, a positive impact on the skier's performance, um, then, only then, can you start to draw in, okay, well, what are their, how do I teach for transfer now? Now that I understand what their goal is and what they want to do and where they're at right now, now I can start to piece together that part of the equation of what is their background and what is their occupation? What are their hobbies? So now, now that's where I could get into the, three, the, the creative teaching aspect of it. But make sure you line up the goal first, and maybe the exercise that you're going to do, and then start to to then make that connection to, to the background. Does that make sense? Make sense? Okay. Um, so it's actually better explained than when I did teaching college. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's very good advice. Thank, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Well, since teaching for transfer is good for everybody, even at the um, newest level, it implies that we need to know a little bit about almost every activity that people do out there. So mm -hmm. for instance, if someone says a dancer, they're, they're a dancer. Um, you know, I did ballroom classes for a while, so I know about things like elevation and, you know, the center of mass and just moving the feet under and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. what, what advice do you give to the newbies? As a, how, how do you, uh, what, have we got to study all these different activities and what? That is a, that is a great question. Well, I, I, what, what, I, what I encourage is for all of us, and this is something I would need to work on my, and, and, and me personally, I'm not an athlete. I am not interested in physical activity. Um, I am very much a stationary person, and and so when you know when I get a call like, "Hey, you want to go out and try this?" It's like, not really. Um, <laughs> and so I need, I need to work on that. So I encourage all of you to do that. But if you are like me and one of those people. You can, what's that? So you're not going to skate? I will go to the skate. I did the skate last time, and I will be there. So, um, uh, the, but, so what I encourage you is, is um, study movement, you know, whether uh, it's video or um, watching sports on television. Uh, deepen your understanding of how the body moves, how the body works. Um, and, and if you don't know about that particular sport, ask them about it. Have them explain, you know, what are what are the, some of the key fundamental things that you work on to improve your tennis game, and and if they can start to talk about the biomechanics of a of a movement in one of their other hobbies or interests or or sports that they play, once you understand that, then you can crosswalk that or make that parallel to to skiing. So what I encourage you is if if you if you if you show if somebody shows up and they say, well, I do this sport, and you're like, I have no idea anything about that sport, uh, don't try to jump to conclusions or assume, make assumptions about how the body moves in that sport. Ask them about it. Have them explain that to you. It's, or or if there's something you're working It's good for another with. reason, too, because mm -hmm. sometimes, especially young people, they just want to please you. So when you ask if they do something, sometimes they'll embellish the fact that they do, which means they really don't yep. have a clue. Yep. So then if you get them to, well, you know, Fine. If you dance, you do ballet. Uh, how does how does how do you think that helps you ski? And, and then you'll get their description, and you'll you know it, you know you'll be able to filter it down a little bit right away. Because usually I, I get a lot of embellished stories. Yeah. Yep. Hello, man. Yes. Absolutely. Kids really do. Uh, yeah. For those that want to cheat, the notes I had were a golf player, a lacrosse player. 
wave surfer, a volleyball person, a yeah. rail no, teacher, and a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> Work it out ahead of time. Watch your YouTube want me for videos two. two days before. Let's see how you figure it in. Uh, I don't know how to check though, so. There's, there's so many what? videos on, on movement on YouTube. I it's watch YouTube crazy. videos you on all that crap. Every single sport. Yeah. Yeah. And even sports you don't think about, you can watch. The other thing is, it doesn't have to be about how they're active. You want ways to relate to them. So it could be their career. It could be... You know something of an intellectual nature right. that which they will understand. Cue, which will cue how they, how right. they, what they're. Don't get trapped in. Style. Gee, their hobby is playing the banjo, and I don't know how that relates to skiing. There's other things in the card, and there's other things you'll have in the conversation with them. So, yeah. don't fixate on. Yeah, I'm a world class trampoline gymnast. For most of us, la di da. I agree, and chances are that they've done a lot of other things, too, that relates to Yeah, so don't get hung up on if you don't get one part of it. So, uh, uh, again, if I may, if you do the college, they show you all the cards in the prep three days. i got a petition to stop that. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, Paul. cheating. Yes. That's BS. Yes. I agree. Going I back to though. what we do mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, we get cards during the teaching cycle on an introduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then those are the two cards that we get when we <laughs> introduce ourselves to our students, and we should be able to build directly from there. Mm -hmm. So yep. we actually get cards every time we teach, mm -hmm. not just for an exam. Exactly, and that's why the, the exam is... I, that's why I really am a, a huge advocate of the, the exam process because, it, you know, PSIA is trying to do what they can do without the logistical challenge and, and, um, and you know, risk and legal liability issues with having you teach real students in an exam scenario. So the, the process of having the profile and the skill, that's, that's really what's being handed to you at, at the beginning of every, every lesson. Bob's exactly right. Um, so... Go away. Wow. Uh, another, another reason for finding out a little bit about that person is not necessarily transferring their activities to skiing, or, but maybe just in being able to communicate with them. If you've got a guy who's got a PhD in something, you're probably going to discuss things in a little different manner than if you get somebody um, that's a little more earthy, you might say. Yep. And, and try to keep it on a, on a more informal level for them, just just to make them feel comfortable. Yeah. They have absolutely nothing to do with how they ski or how they're going to transmit uh, their activity into ski. It, it just it makes things a little easier. And that, that applies a lot to multiple intelligences, if we've heard about multiple intelligences, and also um, yeah. what Dave's referring to there. In the children's module, they, they talk a lot about the CAP model. Um, cognitive, affective, physical, right? And what what is really interesting is while they have that really emphasized in the in the the, the, the children's side of the things, it can be applied to the adult side very much so. The adults may not be moving through phases uh, quite like students are uh, on the physical side. It's kind of reversed, yes. you know? <laughs> But um, but the but the but the concept of what is cognitively, what, where, you know, how, yeah, how, how strong is your student's ability to process um, with, with um, vocabulary that might be a little bit more rich. Um, you know, these, those, those are definitely things to consider. Um, so just like the, before I hand this over, back over to John here uh, a little bit. The, uh, wrap it up, wrap it up. So I know I'm already over time here. So when I talk about getting very, very skilled and, 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 and really getting super specific, you may start out here saying, okay, I, I, you know, I have a profile at a skier here. I want to work. I want to focus on, I want to focus on rotary movements, right? And you know, that's, that's what you, I think if, I, if we focus on rotary movements and improving this aspect of how, how the, the, the student is turning the legs in order to turn the skis, then we're going to get a better outcome, right? If, 
if you start to focus on this, if you can start to bring in some of these other tools like the phases of the turn, now you can think about as it relates to dirt, the duration, the intensity, the timing, the rate of these movements, where is it happening in the phase of the turn? With what type of intensity is it happening at what phase of the turn? You, know, you can get extremely complex now and very precise about at this point in the turn, this is how we're making that movement. And so, and so you can see how as you start to layer all these aspects of the American teaching system, it provides you with a, a, a rich set of tools, but um, it takes a while. It takes a while to put it all together, and I think that's what we're going to try to do a little bit. Um, John, do you want to do you want to take them through uh, the teaching mod module, uh, the teaching model, and then also take them through um, learning styles and BAK a little bit, sure. and then also and just from there you can roll right into the skills concept and the five fundamentals. Wonderful. So, largely what we've been talking about is a huge part of the teaching model. The teaching model, and I have the book because I don't want to commit this to that specific of memory. So in PSI land, there's three parts, or two parts that equal the total. It's the student makeup, the instructor behavior, you combine them and you get a learning partnership. So, and I'm just gonna read them because it's easier than trying to guess through them. The student makeup, what they list as characteristics and background, yeah, we talked about that. Learning styles and preferences, yeah, we talked about that. Motivations, understandings, desires, yeah, we talked about that. Emotional states, maybe we didn't cover that one, but obviously a big part in what your student's going to be able to do, absorb, learn. Beliefs, attitudes, values, you know, learning about the person, right? Um, physical conditioning, health. That's what they're talking about as a student makeup. Yes, ma'am. Which book and what page? <laughs> it is the technical manual. Technical manual. PSI technical manual, mm -hmm. page 99. Okay. So I don't have to write it all down. I can just go look at it. I have it. Um, thank you. Yes, the, the newest one, though, so if you got the old one. It's... Yes. <laughs> yes, the new one that looks. Get a grass globe. What the student brings. You know, what the student is bringing. You know, it's all that time that Paul said on going to the lift, ride the chair, how they ski, how they want to ski, what they do outside of skiing. I'll look at it. Home, but I'll look at it Thank you. It, it's that. It's getting their background. Make sense? Sky and Jane. It, at least somebody <laughs> nod their head so I understand that we, yeah. I can yeah, move on. Do the yeah. Yeah. So then, the second part of it as they like to say, or at least in, in PSI land, is the instructor behavior. So I'm going to bop through them. It's to introduce the lesson, develop trust, assess students and their movements, determine goals and plan experiences, present and share information, guide practice, check for understanding, debriefing the learning experience. So that's, and a lot of times we call that, we know that as the teaching cycle from when we first get our class, how we work our way through the lesson. Um, does that make sense? I, I don't want to like get bogged down in this so much, but basically the first part is what your student's bringing. The second point is how you're developing and delivering the content of your lesson. And we want to touch on, we don't want to like skip over parts per se. Um, so, and then when they combine them, what they claim is the learning partnership. Create a lesson that is creative, individualized, and student-centered. Interactive, experiential, and fun. Contributes to the student success. Provides positive results provides ownership of skills, creates lasting memories, encourages future learning, culminates in guest satisfaction. So that's the PSI of A of it. You know, 
I don't know. I, I personally don't have a lot of question about what this is. It's what we do in a lesson. If you feel like you're missing steps along the way, maybe you want to add them into your lesson. Does, does this make sense to everybody? I, I would say it's fine in theory, but if you've got 12 beginners and no room to walk them around, you're in survival mode. Yeah. So you often have to miss steps. Well, it's, it's not a linear process is, is the issue. Yeah. That's, you know? that's the so, big thing. So, and it, it so continually evolves, enough. and, and you've you got to see things, you got to sense things, you got to be willing to change direction, you know, and, and to think that you can hit every one of these things in some linear fashion. No, it's, it's okay. the ideal. I mean, yeah, it's the ideal. But it's, it, but it's, it's, not, one it's of not even a linear thing. It's, it's, you know, it's, with beginners, it's very rare I ask them what their goal is. Hopefully they go this Yeah, it would be great to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, once again, this is a loose framework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, we're constantly evaluating. We see people walk up to the lesson lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, just listen to your instructors around you at the line and they're going, oh my God, they're yeah. no way they're a level, you know, they're an intermediate. I mean, you know, we evaluate people like the second we see them. <laughs> and we shouldn't stop the whole way through. Because if we're going into some canned, rote approach to how we teach a lesson, then you're not being very individual, you're not serving your, your customer, and if you have multiple customers in a group, I hate to say it, some people are going to be better served by a given lesson, and some people, it's not going to mean as much to, because some people are going to be here and here, and you got to do the best you can. Um, so that's the simple and, and when you're thinking of, of lessons especially in what we'll do in the last half of tonight is but try to go through that mental process when you're developing how you see a lesson going and for the sake of conversation we can go with an idealized version where we don't get 20 minutes into it and go oh my god that first run must have been the best run of their life. <laughs> Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you said VAC you wanted me to cover? You can, it's so, up to you. So, do we get learning styles? Learning styles is the doers, the seers, the watchers, and the thinkers. And the feelers. Yeah, I want them in, them in there somewhere, but we typically go with the four things. People. So, so, you want to address all these things. As instructors, we often err to what we find best for us. If you're a doer, if you're the guy who wants to, I just, I gotta try it. I, I see you do something, I, I gotta try it. I can't, I don't know even how to talk about it until I try it. And the main thing is to use it multiple intelligences because sometimes they think they learn this way and after you show them a different way or, or yep. mm -hmm. that then they actually discover oh I actually learned it better this yes. way you know so to yep. use multiple and, and sometimes that's where like the VAC almost comes in well because yeah. that's visual auditory and kinesthetic I'm gonna show you I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna have you do it and, and you'll feel it hopefully if you're doing it you're feeling it right. The, the breakdown there is some people need to feel it before they can do yeah, it. Yeah. So sometimes you have to actually, like I do with beginners, a lot of times you're getting down and you're literally making their ski. Yeah. You move their ski so it twists their leg so they go, oh, that's what you mean by point my ski this way. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to feel. So, so in, in, a, in a sense of a lesson, exam-wise, they're going to want to know you cover these. So if you cover... While you're driving, all those things, long, you know, you, you do the circle turn. We're, we're and, watching. And, if we're, you know. and the, the don't always think just describing it is the audible. Sometimes it's a cute, like you're skiing behind someone. Sound. Right. It's a music. I'm gonna clap. Yeah. Music. Right. I'm gonna right. whistle. Maybe. I'm gonna say turn. One, turn. Two, three, one, turn. Two, three, one, two, three. Right. And, and which then gets into the multiple intelligences. Right. So, yeah. You know. 
You can also use the sound as far as um, it, it being a cue to change a movement pattern. So, so if if the, if this if the, you hit um, snow that is loud uh, and firmer and slipperier, um, you know, use that use that sound of what the snow sounds like under your skis as a cue to change a movement pattern or or, or to to make sure that you don't tense up. You know, when you hear the scraping, don't tense up. Relax, move with it. You know, it's those yeah. Another, another example of that, what Paul was saying, is that I know someone who, um, she's an examiner, and uh, when she's spoken to on rotary or getting us to focus on rotary, when uh, you're making the round movement, where a guy is uh, going to get the rotary movement, you know, we get silly. And she says, you don't have to, you don't have to say it too loud. You can say it under your breath, but find something fun that matches the movement. Uh, so you can yeah, talk to students because it actually takes the, uh, you know, it kind of takes the, the uh, stress out of it as well. I think, excuse with Merlin, I think it was even an exam she was saying this, or maybe not, but talking like finishing into turns and going just whoosh, just like, just to people that don't turn enough at the, just, just think about that and just, you're done turning, but just go whoosh and turn a little more. She's got quite the variety of amazing sounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a <laughs> quick overview of the teaching model. Um, if you have any, any questions on that, per se. Um, and the fact learning styles, once again, better off group lessons, little bit of a shot, unless you, if you run across something that really works, you know, ride that horse till the end. But, you know, a little bit of a shotgun approach um, might help you find, once again, our lessons are only like an hour and a half, so you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of in-depth exploration to find things <laughs> out. Um, Skill concept and five fundamentals. Um, so Paul asked me to cover this, so this will be largely the non-official PSIA version of this. <laughs> um, the skills concept, as of the coming out of the current tech manual, leaves balance as not a skill, but as an outcome of applying the skills. So it's edging movements, pressure movements, rotary movements. Movements or control? It, splitting control hairs. Control gets to the fundamentals. <laughs> so, it, and so it's, and it's also, balance is a, is both a skill, skill, it balances, I'm sorry. It's not a skill. Balance is both the source and the outcome. So it's the source right. and the outcome, um, but it is it is defined as rotary control, edge control, pressure control. So control. No, no they, movements. Uh, they they drop the movements. Yeah, they change it. Yeah, but again, don't worry about that. This is you know, don't get hung up on that. It's really okay. you're, we're missing the point. If well, we're getting hung well, up. Well, here's the hair that I can't stop with it. Maybe it's not a hair. So mm -hmm. what's the difference between the skills concept and the five fundamentals? Because that'll be the five fundamentals, and I see three C's and E and an R. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what you're saying is what mm -hmm. most everybody says, except for the people who go, this is all stupid, I don't even know why I'm paying attention anymore. I wouldn't worry unless I would I wouldn't worry if I wasn't going to be fed. Right. I love There's the, the five fundamentals. Right there. I love the five fundamentals. From, from, you, so you, to, don't, you don't need it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Anyone who's thinking about level three, you need it. Level two, you don't need it. This thing where he says mastery, that should say mandatory level three. They're going to want phases of turn, dirt, fundamentals. At least that's my experience. Mm -hmm. um, so the five fundamentals, which I'm sure Paul gave me a copy of in here, and I don't, it's just the next page, I think, it's the next page. So. It's the very last page. So the five fundamentals, as Rick said, as you read these things, they come from the skills, right? 
So, first, or, they don't really number them. They're just five of them. There's not a one through five. But they always list this in, in this order. Control, control, control the relationship of the center of mass to the base of support to direct pressure along the length of the ski. That to me is balance. So, so John, you are you are observant enough to figure that out. Not everybody is. So I think the five fundamentals is really. It's really to take the, the skills concept and, and put a little more meat on it so people really understand how to apply it to, to skiing movements. So it's like, okay, great. I understand we have, to, we have to be able to tip our ski on and off of edge effectively. We need to be able to turn our legs in a way that, that steers the skis to get the optimal performance out of it. We have to manage pressure Okay, well, what does that really mean? But okay, I get it. We have to, the ski bends and we got to man manage pressure um, as it bends and, and as forces build and turns and things like that. Um, but I think to, to a lot of folks, um, to really figure out how to um, apply the skills concept. Uh, it's, a to, bit, it's a little bit more how to. Yes. Where, where, where the first is just, yeah, this is it. It's a little and abstract, is a little, isn't this it? This is a little bit more how well, to. Well, yeah. if you take. Rotary is kind of maybe the easiest one. Right, but it doesn't. Rotary, right. In itself, it doesn't tell you how to. As a it's skill. Just, just as that's a skill you need to It's a skill, right. right. Controlling the rotary motion of the ski, the skiing, the person. And then when we get into the one that talks about rotary here, it goes into detail. Control the ski's rotation, turning, pivoting, steering, with leg rotation separate from upper body rotation. So it's a little bit beyond just the skill, and it's how we want to apply that skill, how we want to make use of that skill. So I, I think it's it been said. It doesn't take it into the, uh, the phase of the turn yet, though, so, and I guess that's why that's graduate level. That's, that's mm -hmm. three level stuff, because now you, you gotta be able to take it to the next level. Like what phase of the turn? Are you doing what nature of this, these yeah. things? And a lot of that's in the movement analysis of things. Um, but, but yeah, so it, it's, it's more of a what do we want to do with this? Because rotary, I mean, this is a rotary movement, right? Yeah. It's not the most desired. So the five fundamentals are trying to tell you what we'd like to achieve through pressure management or pressure Control, rotary control, edging control. So the other ones are control pressure from ski to ski and direct pressure toward the outside ski. AKA lateral balance. Yep, yeah, I'll take it. Control edge angles through a combination of inclination and angulation. That's kind of how we want to generate our edging, um, control ski rotation, we just talked about that. And then the last is the, and why they went from control to regulate on this makes no sense to me because they're virtually the same word. Regulate the magnitude of pressure created through ski snow interaction. Regulate. That's, that's really dirt, that's getting the dirt though. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's duration, that's intensity, yeah. that's that's the rate. It's I look at it as that's kind of like a lot of that we're doing through our flexion and extension, right? We're coming up to a bump. We don't want to go airborne. We draw things up. Okay. We have a little divot in the extend our legs out into it. Um, you know, whether in, and if it's just a good, quick, strong turn that develops a lot of force that we have to absorb some of that force at the end of the turn. You know, this, as the ski's coming around, it's digging and putting, pushing pressure back. And if we want to go into the next turn, we can't let that continue to push us this way because we want to turn and go that way. So we have to absorb some of that down here so we can go that way. So it's, it's kind of more a how or, it's not really a how to, it's a what we would like to see out of the skills.
Make yeah. some sense? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And I think that completed what you asked me to do, Paul. That did. That did. Thank you. So, um, so I'm going to take a moment. So this is each one of these areas that we talked about. We could probably spend almost a whole. We could spend a whole summer training session on learning styles. We could spend a whole session on the five fundamentals. If you remember last year, with our two years ago, two, two, years, two ago. years ago, when we did the summer trainings. Every summer training we did was in the five hundred miles, wasn't it? Yeah, if I remember correctly. Um, we basically we just built, we just continued to train on the five fundamentals, and then towards the end we started getting the video movement assessment using the five fundamentals. But it, that was the focus for the whole year. So any one of these we can go really deep in, really long, um, and uh, all, all of us in this room have experience with, with I think almost all of these, um, except for some of our newbies. Uh, maybe and and so I think that um, that said for this um, for this next part of the training feel free just to go where you're strong try if you feel like I don't know the five fundamentals but I know the skills concept don't try to learn the five fundamentals and apply them to this activity it might it might just get a little challenging um, <clears throat> but if you if you were through those trainings try to use the five fundamentals here when we, when we go through these activities but I wanted to talk about delivery um, real quick, uh, and this applies not just, you know, I'm going to talk about this in the context of the exam scenario, uh, but it applies to obviously teaching students as well. So again, you'll pull two cards, the skier profile and the skills pro, uh, profile. What yep. are these cards you're talking about? The, the cards, um, so basically uh, the uh, PSAE, uh, each divisional office has their own exam process. Uh, the Eastern Division has a creative teaching module. Um, it has a and it has a movement assessment module as well. And the creative teaching module uh, has cards. So they, there will be a ring That's that the examiner the exam. has. Yeah, for the exam. Yep. So the creative teaching module for the exam. Uh, the examiner will have a ring with cards uh, attached, a hole punch cards attached to a ring, and he'll take them off and he'll let you pick from the, the deck, and we'll be doing that as well today. Um, and you match a, a profile, a skier profile with a skill profile, um, and it <coughs> comprises of the skier profile, uh, those two cards together. Um, and then you basically have to put together a, a teaching segment for, for that scenario. Um, when you do this, so here are big points, like get in your own notepad, write this down. Um, number one, Singular focus, okay? Singular focus. So when you look at your cards, say, I am going to help this student learn how to tip the ski on the edge earlier in the turn. I am going to help this student learn how to round out the bottom of the turn to control speed. I am going to help this student. You get it, all right? You pick that one thing, you stick with it. If you start to add another thing and another thing, you will not perform well. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So, um, singular focus. Next thing to point to, to, to emphasize, you are on a ski clinic with your peers, and you're sharing with your peers how you would coach somebody in this situation. The ski instructors that are with you during this exam process, they're not your students. So don't talk to them like they're your students. Talk to them as if they're your peers. You don't have to take them through, like if, when you, as you take them through these activities, say, and what I would do then is we would practice this. We practice this for several runs. You don't have several runs to go on this thing. You have one run. So you would say, this is something we'd work on for several run runs, and then I would move on to do this. Um, uh, be careful how, I would say, be careful how you engage the group. If you, sh if you start to get, pull, in, pull them in to participate and contribute, you can lose control of the group very quickly. So um, just be careful, be careful with that. Um, if you ask somebody, so what did you feel? What did you feel when you, when you did that activity? Then you might be in a position where you have to 
Right? Like I felt this, I felt that, I felt this, and then you, and then you're you're left kind of managing the situation where somebody everybody's saying something different. Tell them what they should feel instead of asking them. You know, just say, hey, when you when you do this activity, what you should feel here at this part at at, at this point in the turn, this is what I'm feeling in my boot. This is what I feel happening to my ski. This is how I feel my ski bending. Um, the other thing to write down and emphasize with delivery is look at your terrain and know your terrain that you're at. If you're at a bigger mountain, realize that you have 1,500 feet of vertical and you don't have round top 600 feet of vertical. Use, use the terrain they give you, use every inch of it, um, and make sure that you ski. Make sure that you ski a lot. Um, I'll share, uh, we'll have some time to share about our, our exam experiences a little bit, but my level two teaching exam experience, I remember watching somebody that said, okay, we they, he stood at the tops, talked for about five minutes, and then said, um, and, and so what you know, I do is we do this, and and we, we made two turns and he stopped, and he continued to talk for another four or five minutes, and then we did another two turns, and we stopped. And uh, we had skied a total about 70 feet of vertical, and then the examiner said, you know, I'm sorry, we're, we're out of time, so um, the next person can use the rest of this run. So, and that was it. So we had moved from the chairlift about 70 feet of vertical, we had about 1,000 feet of vertical to go, and um, we didn't even have to ride the chairlift lift back up again because the examiner just said, next person can use this run, why don't you just start from here? <laughs> So, um, so what I what I recommend is you take your run, right, and you think about breaking it down somehow. You know, whether it's you ski to here and stop, and here to stop, and here to stop, or you know, maybe you want to have them have a little more practice time. So you do something like this in here, right? So as you design your as you design your progression, think about how you're going to chunk skiing time and stopping points where you're going to build and progress through the, the activities. Um, to implement this, there's a, there's a handout. If you're looking in the handout, so there's a print off of the exercise line for well, progression. I'm sorry, guys, you, you were talking about mm -hmm. So when you're explaining something, this is what we want. I mean, are you actually, you want all your peers to demonstrate all the activities? Are you looking at them saying good, good, or are you just, are you just saying very quickly, here's what we'll do, and moving to the next? I mean, you're not looking for progression. Yes, yeah, you, you can, yes, no, you, you take the students, take the participants through it. Remember, it's like, it's like us going out on a ski yeah. clinic. You know, like, hey, you know, this is what we would do with, you know, this is something I do with a blue student, you know, and we, and we start out and we, we all do it together, you know, and like, oh yeah, and we talk about it. It's the same type of thing. Have them do it, have them experience it. Yes, you can give them um, feedback. It's a creative teaching module, so it's it, there's not a movement assessment component to it, but if you see something, um, there's not, not going to be any points deducted if you if you uh, if you just say, hey you know just to clarify we're you know we're we're not doing wedge Christie's right now we're doing open parallel you know like that's that is perfectly appropriate mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh, I got dinged on my comments that I didn't give enough feedback to my peers in creative teaching, in creative yep. teaching. and I didn't yep. realize that that was one of the tasks if you're teaching to your peers mm -hmm. so definitely give that feedback yep. Yeah. So, so the exercise line. If you turn to that page, uh, I love. I use this all the time. It's a great, great, great concept. It's, I love this part of the American teaching system. Um, with the the exercise line, you have stationary. Okay. So you introduce a concept. Standing still. You know, we all standing here. Standing here. What I want you to do is tip the ski on the edge, or you know, we do you know, bow ties in the snow, right? All these different things that we do. So as you identify, okay, here's the movement pattern I want the student to change. Explain standing still, the movement that we're making in the boot. So explain standing still how we're flexing that joint, right? Okay? And then once we explain it, stationary, now we put it into motion, but we put it into motion 
and a very, very, very simple task. Terrain that is very easy and comfortable for the student to handle. Um, make sure that you're aware of that when you're pulling your, your ski or um, skill card. Because if the skill is, if their skill profile is, is open parallel skier, um, that's great if you're doing something on blue terrain. You know, if it's, if you're reading the profile and the, the, ski, the skill profile and the skier profile, and they're having problems with speed control uh, on green terrain, then, you know, introducing something on blue terrain is probably, probably way off point. So, do a very simple activity. Um, this could mean putting it into a straight run. This could be mean putting it into a J-turn, okay? This could mean putting the movement into uh, garlands. So make sure that you after, you, after you show and explain the movement stationary, you put it into a very simple gliding and sliding type kind of activity. Yeah. Do the, do the situations come up, they give you a scenario where it's a Green, green steer on a, and you're on the you you know, you know, Typically what happens is you pull 92. your cards, okay. and then when okay. you pull your cards, you can Thanks. say, okay, based on this, this is a train I'd like to go for. Okay, go so for. we recommend that, and that's part of the assessment, then we determine that. It's part of the assessment, and so yeah. Back to the slower level. Yeah, so if you get, if you, get you know, um, yeah, it's, it's their third time skiing, and they're having problems um, completing turns with speed control, and you say, hey, let's head over to Minuteman. Yeah. You're already, you're already in big trouble. You're already in big trouble from your assessment perspective. Okay. So you, you got it. You got an examiner going, hmm, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if they're nice, they might, they might, you know, guide you. Like, are you, are you sure you want to use this one right here? Yeah, you know? yeah, if they're nice. Um, once you once you once you do the activity in a very simple environment, now we can start to turn up the complexity, and we can do this in we can do this in phases. We can do it progressively, um, but we now we can dial up the dial up the um, complexity. So if we were doing J turns, now maybe we put it into a C turn. Maybe we have them start doing it in link turns, right? Or we change the pitch, or we change the speed, or heck. We change this. We change the terrain, snow conditions. Maybe, hey, we are trying this on groomed terrain. Now we got some ungroomed over here. Let's see how it works over there. So now, once you get the movement moving in a very simple environment or tasks, now start to change, turn up the complexity of it. And then finally, is hold. Um, yeah, this is really when, when you just bring it into your skiing. I think that's a lot of times just bringing it all together. And, and actually, as you move through. As you move through that complexity type uh, stage of it, um, you know, it can very naturally, all of a sudden, you can't even tell when you've moved from complex into whole occasionally, but it's, it's that, that same type of concept. So again, if we think about our terrain here, you can start at the top. Maybe you could even say, hey, let's ski like this skier. Let's ski while they ski. We, we would told to do that in the college, uh, and it's a very good thing because I amended what I was going to say when I skied the skier. So you get them moving straight away instead of standing around, but it gives you some more thinking time. It absolutely gives you more thinking time, and the other thing is, like you said, it, it, it. it lets you correct. You, you yeah, feel it. Feel you feel it, it and it, it gives you an opportunity to maybe correct what you know, you what you thought, like, oh yeah, I, I know what, like, okay, I know what the student feels when they're skiing like this, like, I, I, you know, they feel tension here in the back, and then, like, you ski that way, and you're like, oh, and then start, things start happening with the, with the, the, the ski interaction with the snow on that terrain. Uh, the other thing is snow conditions. What I found is really helpful is in the exam situation, it's like, oh, I, bless you, I know how, I know how the skier, I know how the skier feels and performs, and then you get into the snow conditions, and then you're like, ooh, this activity might not work so well, so maybe I can I should switch some things up. So give it good. So taking that—that's another thing to write down in your notebook for level two teaching, creative teaching model. Take take a take a little bit of, of you know vertical just to ski like that skier. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. Maybe ski 100 feet of vertical. Let's ski how that student skis, so we can get a sensation of what they're feeling and how the ski is performing. Then you stop and say. So this is this is you know this is what I, with a student like this this is what we really this is the movement pattern I want to see to change in order to get the ski to perform better 
And, and then you introduce that statically, you know, standing. But maybe you could find an area to stop somewhere, maybe where the, there's a trail, the pitch levels out, and it's a little more flat and everybody's comfortable. Um, or if you need a pitch, do it on a pitch, you know, it was just, you know, depending on the scenario. And you, you show that movement statically, and you have the group do it with you. And so then, and then you say, okay, now let's put it into motion. It's getting back to that super, 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 um, you know, skilled teacher. You really want the extra credit. Now we're talking about dirt, okay? That, you know, that movement of tipping the ski, this is when I want it to happen. This is where I want it to happen in the term. This is how much intensity, I, you, this is what you should be feeling. This is what muscle group should be firing. And it should, you know, it shouldn't be a soft touch. It should be a hard touch, you know, those types of things. It should be like walking on eggshells, you know, the, using that type of language. So the intensity, the rate, the timing, the duration of the movement, and thinking about where, where that's happening in the phases of the turn. Um, so that's what, that, so that's basically what we were talking about with getting super, super precise with this. Um, before we start to break, let me see here, let me look at our agenda here. So I'm going to check with John. It's oh, good. We are doing well. We are doing really well. Provided we skip everything else on the first half of the agenda, we're doing great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I think we should do. Yeah. So, so um, John, are, instead of instead of like I had down here like doing a demonstration. Yeah, I don't think we should do a demonstration. We all should. Yeah. Let's skip that. Let's skip that before we break into groups. Um, does anybody want to share? Uh, we had um, John. I'd, I'd love for you to share. I, I shared a little bit about my my exam experience and who did well and who didn't do well. Um, the ones that the ones that did this did did better. They used their terrain and paced it. Um, the talking, uh, breaking up your talking. You know where you where you don't even need to talk a minute up here and say, hey, let's let's ski like these people, right? Just head it off. Like, 50, you don't even need to talk for less than 10 seconds there. We move down and we stop, and then maybe we talk down here for maybe one or two minutes, and then we ski some more, and then we clarify something here for maybe a minute, and we keep on moving, and then maybe down we here, we talk about two minutes, and then we get down to the bottom, we summarize up, right? And so if you think about breaking, chunking the amount like stopping and making sure that you're not talking more than like three minutes and then moving the group again, um, that will help tremendously too. And the examiner will love you because it really stinks just to stand there for 10 minutes and listen to somebody talk. So, um, so definitely do this. Um, uh, John, do you, you want to, is there anything else like you saw how people, what they did, who performed well, who was successful, who wasn't successful. Was there, was there any other observations from, from your experience? You want to share? No, I think I threw them in as we went along. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so the mistake I made is I didn't explain I'm going to teach. I take a skill. That was a mistake. And I didn't give enough feedback. But I did enough. Uh, it was exactly as you said. Some people went about a hundred yards. You know, we ski for keep it 20 minutes, so we ski for 15 minutes out of 20. Yep. yep. Keep, keep moving. Keep moving. Um, for those of you who know, John was successful for his level two teaching. Yeah. So, um, so he is he is level two certified. And how long have you been working toward? Do you mind me asking? How long have you been working toward? Too long. Hello. <laughs> 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 I made the arrogant mistake of starting too early. And uh, those that remember Malinowski said I shouldn't do it, and I bullied him into it. <laughs> so that was a mistake. Uh, so actively, about five years, but I got hung up on a skiing movement. <laughs> so I got the teaching in a year. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the experience we get here, uh, the only thing is, uh, if you can afford it, I would encourage you to do the college. Mm -hmm. the college. Be, 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 because it's almost like you spent all this money with us and I'm a good instructor and I want you to pass. So yeah. I would say the pass level is, passing is easier if you do the college. Mm -hmm. 
the, the Can I add to that? Yes, yeah. Go so, ahead. you know, I got my level two in 93. Did they have it? Did they have it? I'm just straight. I'm just blown out. What can I say? But that was the last year that they had what is now known as college. And I did three days um, prior to the two day exam at Seven Springs. It was the best thing I could have done from my personal mentality. I knew the terrain. I was in a, a semi examining situation the whole time. I was on. I stayed in a hotel room by myself. I, you know, I just. You know, published up every night, more knowledge. Um, I, just, I just changed I just their and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, uh, it was something that, like, if I, if I come into a situation cold, I'm this kind of person where I just, I get intimidated more easily. So I felt really comfortable in that situation. So it takes knowing yourself, too. And, and because I think the college is very right for some people and probably feels like cheating for others. But we don't care about it. No, that, 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 if it's that. available, I, I'll do college when I finally get my level three. I'll do college. Yeah. If it's available to you, I think it's a great idea too. But there is one other thing, uh, Keith Lee. For those that remember, mm -hmm. said you need to be have a canon lesson for every skill. So for the three skills, you have to have a progression in your mind. Maybe it's this progression, but you only use this. Mm -hmm. So we'll work it out ahead of time. If you're going to teach edging, pressure, rope, what are you going to do? Which look for me. The the um, <clears throat> the other thing with this, I keep on telling people is with the new process of banking modules. Um, the success rate we're seeing is um, meaning the old process. Uh, it, it was it was more friendly to the rock stars and the ones that were a little less well-rounded. Uh, the story that I say is had I taken my level one like my level two ski teaching under the new the new format if I would have performed the way I did I would not have passed all three modules. I would have passed my mountain skiing, I would have passed my agility versatility, and I would have fat and I would have not pass my skiing at all. Um, <laughs> this guy right there. This guy in it. So yeah, so I, uh, I um, you know, when, they, when I sat down with the examiners after the level two process, they said, you were this close. You were this close. And the reason why is you, your, your wedge, wedge Christian, open parallel is not at the standard. They said, at, at, at no point did we ever see you come off the boot cup. You had that boot bent in half the whole time when you were doing wedge, wedge, Christie, open parallel. Um, and uh, one examiner said, you know, you were, you know, you had, you were unsuccessful at those tasks. And he said, and I said, you know, you got down to your bump skiing, and and he said, you know, and I was like, well, look, he can't open his ankle joint. And so he said, on this day. I, did, I decided to say that you met the standard, but I want you to know if you were this close, and had I not seen you open up that ankle joint in that bump run, you would not have been successful today. Um, and so I just encourage anybody to engage in the process, even if you don't finish it. Um, it's rewarding that you can find success in one or two modules, um, and bank that, and then go back and train and, and have focus on those, on those subsequent modules that you need to get through. Um, and again, we're seeing it rewards the persistent, um, but the the you know the, the hot feet that wasn't super well well rounded they're not faring as well with the new process. So they're really looking for versatility. Uh, that's the other thing that they're looking for is a lot of um, that's a module, but you know, they're looking over for versatility in skiing as well more so than before. Um, and so that's why you know a lot of people were like, you know, I can I can you know I can rip medium radius turns better than this guy. Why did he pass and I didn't pass? And it's like, well, you know, because you you can't do an open parallel turn. Every time we say do open parallel, you're going Mach nine, you, every turn progressively gets faster and you're and you're just ripping arcs the whole way down. Um, and that ain't it. So, um, so it definitely is pushing us to, to produce a more well-rounded skier, but uh, also it's, it's, it's also um, rewarding those more so that are persistent in the process. So with that,
Um, anything else? Anybody else want to share their level two profs, their their experience level two teaching, and who was successful, who wasn't? What was the breakthrough for you that you know you had failed attempts and you had a successful attempt? No. Shall we take? Yes. Let's take it is it is seven forty five. Add that concept of how to use the terrain. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what I also want. I also want to tell this guy: you're a stock, right? You're trying to maximize the game from your stock. You don't sell it on the way up, right? You sell when it's you sell at, at the right time. Don't bail too early. All right. So when you're don't bail on this turn. That was really good. Don't bail on this turn so it's complete. I like so, that. Sloping and slippery. If we started walking along, so, so remaining upright, so we're just going to sit slip over the whole time. So we have to so figure out a way. And, and I'm saying, that's exactly the same. And the other reason is because then when you turn your feet, you're turning in the middle of the ski instead of pressuring the middle of the ski. You're pressuring the back of the ski, which really is a function of the ski. You're pressuring the back of the ski, which really is a function of the ski. pressuring the back of the ski, which really gets you out of control. And we can't see that. We don't have to figure out where to go. You can get that all by just watching. She is a parallel skier with a wide stance. So what we decided that we would start out with is to take her skis off and get her to stand where she stands when she's playing soccer and when she's running. Where are your feet? And then start to move with that and take just in her boots, moving her feet, walking in her boots with her feet underneath her hips. Um, and uh, and make turns with her feet, you know, walking like you're turning. And um, what was the other thing besides that? Oh, thousands, you know, thousand steps. So then we'll add the skis back, do thousand step turns. And the next thing was just to ski, right? Just ski. Ski J turn. Then we would progress to skiing J turns. And then we would put it all together, and hopefully those. Feet are a little closer. Why are not and not so high? Why were we going to do J turns? Because I like to do J turns. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else gave him too much time, and he, he found a way to fit it in. Yeah. But it does make sense because it'll give her some give that person some speed so they can have success, rather than thinking they have to link the turns right away because one of her problems is she gets frustrated when she can't do it. So J turns allow success first. So for you, like, just for my sake, what was the? You clearly had the stationary of just walking without skis on. What was the first thing you were going to do once you put skis back on? We were going to do. We were going to walk in. Just use the skis and walk in, in on the terrain flat, and do do turns that way, keeping your feet underneath. Then moving to skiing and doing thousand step turns. Okay. What was the first thing where you were going to be sliding forward? While you're stepping. Okay. If you do a thousand step turn, you you slide. Sliding. So Is that you want the thousand step turn to be the first simple moving thing you're doing while you're stepping? No, the first thing you do in your skis, you step, and mm -hmm. then you move into thousand step turn. Okay. With the skis. Okay. So it's, and it may work, like. And we don't know this person, we didn't see this person ski. My mind goes to, I'm going to put her in a traverse. So they're sliding going, we're moving with gravity, and we're stepping. Just as a, a mm -hmm. oh, just the next, yeah, before turn. The, the simple, right? Before right. I get to a turn, okay. Great. a straight line sliding with stepping. With stepping. Marching. Mm -hmm. I do that with the kids a lot. When you're trying to get them out of a wedge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, a death wedge, when marching them march across the hill. Mm -hmm. can, can, it, yeah, yeah. can anybody tell me why? So, what, what can, is a possible reason that a skier skis with a very wide stance? Why, why do they do that? It could Fear. be an equipment issue, it could be a body issue. But if she's playing soccer... Well, actually, with a ballet, it was even harder right. because yeah. Yeah. ballet is yeah. usually closer together. Yeah. I mean, the old plie and stuff. So it's it's hard to, was, I mean, the soccer puts you in an athletic stance. We're not supposed to add to this. I know. 
I'm sorry, how right? But the question is why? Why? So what is a common? Yeah. So the question was, we, I'm not asking you to add a backstory to the to the profile or the skill here. What I'm asking is, what is a common reason why skiers ha adopt a very wide stance when skiing? What is a common reason? Right. Yep. They're they're it's a balance issue. So what is so why what is the wider stance accomplishing in that that aspect? Bigger base of support. Yeah. Anchoring. Yep. Which Bigger is interesting baseball. because as a ballet dancer and as a soccer player, her, you know. So, I, so that's where, no, it's not, no. it's not. But, I don't, you know, I, I don't think it's balance, I think it's fear. It could be, and that's right, right. I think it is probably more psychological, but the psycho, you know, if you're fearful and you're in the back seat, you might have more of a balance issue. And you could probably leverage that ballet background just because, like, you know, neutral spine, and then, you know, talking about first position is here, okay, first position's here, let's straighten that out, and just mm -hmm. go into a neutral from first to, instead of second to, mm -hmm. 